Well, do you like creating your own paintings from say like a, a photo or maybe someone else's painting, but changing it up a little bit to make it your own? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. Come along with me and see what we did. Well, I just know that all of you love this painting from our favorite TV artist. Originally, this was done in all sap green colors. And I didn't especially like that color. I like the green, but I also thought, gee, it would be so interesting to do something different and add different colors to this same painting. So that's what I decided to do. So my name is Yovette, in case you don't know me, and I'm glad you joined me today. So um, we're starting out with just this black gesso, and I started using my sponge to tap this on. But what I'm doing is just doing a basic background. I'm going to have foliage in here, um, some trees. There'll be a nice little path and uh, oh, just kind of fun things. Hopefully I can show you some techniques in this video that will help you learn how to do it. Tapping away. That's all I'm doing. I just want to get, I want this to look like there's a little foliage in the background. When I cover this with paint, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is just very light, just like, like this was uh, leaves or trees way in the distance. So just tap out. Now I want to take my foam brush and I want to make a huge tree. I brought my tree a little more into the center. Uh, I just wanted it to frame the painting a little bit differently. So I'm just blocking this in. Just, and when you make your tree, I'll tell you what I did is I just went on, um, on the uh, Google and I just typed in images for trees, uh, unique trees and um, large trees and just a whole bunch of different kinds of trees. And uh, that's where I got my idea from. I so I, I got from those ideas, I picked out something that I really liked and didn't copy it exactly. I just kind of made it into my own thing. So this is, gonna, this is how it's going to be. So I'm blocking this in fairly heavy. And I want this tree to be pretty massive. And this center part here would be, uh, the tree is fairly large, so this upper part will be fairly large too. And I want to thicken these limbs and the trunk a little bit. See, oh, now I see a slip. I don't like that. If you see a slip, go ahead and repair it right away if you can. Uh, my, my paint is dry as I'm working. It dries very fast, so I can take most of it off. But go ahead and make those repairs. Just make that tree. Anything you see that you don't like or you want to change a little bit, go ahead and do it before we actually start the painting. So now I'm just covering up that dark spot with a little white. Make sure your paint is dry. Unfortunately, mine right here wasn't quite dry enough, but that's okay. It'll, I'll make it work. So just cover those spots that you don't like. And then with your sponge, just go back over a little bit so it kind of blends in, looks natural. Now this is water mixable linseed oil. I just put some on a paper towel and I'm just scrubbing it into my, I shouldn't say scrubbing, I'm just wiping it into my canvas. Now I'm using a very smooth canvas so I can do that. If you're not using a smooth canvas you're going to have to uh, scrub it in with a brush. So let's start out with a little Indian yellow. Now I'll tell you, I do not have Indian yellow in water mixable oils. So what I'm doing is I'm using a different product that's just a regular oil. And this will work just fine. 
it will still clean with soap and water. I'm not worried about that at all. So I'm just filling in this center area, about the center third of the painting. And I want to bring it out to the edges. Just a nice coverage. And then just wiping this brush off really well, just as much as you can. And just go right into your alizarin crimson. Now these are all transparent colors and that's what makes this work. If they were opaque colors then it would cover your black and your or your brown whatever you're using and it wouldn't work so well. But since these are transparent it works out perfect. So now I'm covering the lower third, almost a third, not the whole thing, but covering the lower third in of the uh, painting and blending up into the yellow a little bit. Now this video originally was quite long so as you can see I've speeded it up just a tiny bit. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't uh, bother you too much. <laughs> anyway wipe that brush off really well again. You get as much of that as you can. Get that off. And next, let's go into some phthalo green. Again, that's uh, one of my favorite colors. I love phthalo green. Oh, so pretty. And you, you might be worried about blending the green into the yellow. It's not a problem. The yellow and the green are very compatible together. At least I think they are. So with the phthalo green, I'm just going on the upper edge. Going out to both the left side and the right side. And now some sap green. And that will blend in beautifully with the phthalo green. Uh, it also deepens the color a little bit, which is really great. Now this sap green, I definitely want a good coverage on the top. But I also want good coverage on the sides because the sides would be a little bit darker. And the reason I use these water mixable oil paints is because I've had over the years I've used oil paint and regular oil paint and thinners and stuff. I've used them so much that I was developing bad allergies, nose problems, chest problems, a lot of stuff from those toxic chemicals and so I just decided to try this and just totally fell in love with it. So anyway, now I'm adding purple to the edges. Now this will darken it even more. It's almost kind of like giving you a vignette feel. You know, a vignette is where the sides kind of get dark. Well, actually a vignette is where they fade out. This isn't fading out, but it's getting dark. So just all along the outer edges, some purple. And that right there is lovely. And I thought I seriously considered leaving it just like this <laughs> and not doing anything different with it and you know just continuing the painting but not putting the white on. So now this is just titanium white. Now titanium white and, and was water mixable but it is um, opaque and so it covers whatever you put it on. So you'll see it turns almost like a mist as you're applying it. And I'm doing little circles and just, oh, and just whatever feels good. You just want to make this kind of smoky, misty, cloudy looking. So I'm just spreading this all over. Trying not to get it too, too thick but thick enough that it will show as a mist. As so you can see as I go over the trees, it totally covers the trees. But that's okay, because we'll fix it. <laughs> so over here on the right side, just continue applying that white. 
It's okay to go over the tree trunk. You do want to go over that a little bit. Don't make the corners too light though. So those first, uh, the first five colors are transparent colors and my plus my white. So now I'm taking a bunny brush and I'm just lightly going over all these areas. Anything that's too thick, I want to just blend it out a little bit. Um, you can watch as I do this. You can see where I, where I go with it. And now I'll just kind of start blending in those corners. And be sure and keep wiping your brush periodically. Keep that thick white paint off of there. See now that's looking very smoky, isn't it? <laughs> I like that. And most of the time I'm just wiping my brush off. I'm not putting it, I'm, I'm not dipping in water and cleaning it or anything. I'm just wiping the brush off. And now with just a paper towel, I just want to let, uh, just go over some of this tree trunk to darken it. So I dipped into some oil uh, medium first. And now I'm just putting in some little branches and twigs and stuff like that in the foreground. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure I like this brush. <laughs> it, uh, what it happens is it's coming out thicker than what I would really like. Also, probably if I use thinner, it would um, make thinner branches. But I don't have my thinner out, and I just have the oil, and I'm not going to take the time to do both of them. So, wow, well, it was just oil is what we're going to get. A lot of this is going to be covered with foliage anyway, so it won't make a whole lot of difference. But what I'll recommend to you is use thinner and uh, use a thin liner brush. This one is probably just a little bit too thick. So let's get some over here on the right side. This is why I moved my tree to the right a little bit because I wanted to have some foliage over on the left side. And you notice when I'm doing this, I'm twirling my brush to make those branches so they're not stick straight. It always looks better if your branches have a little wiggle, a little shape to them. If you make them stick straight, I don't know, it just looks too stiff. Okay, now, sorry, the, the uh, outside color changed with, with clouds and sun and whatnot. It just a couple of different times during this painting it changed, so. This is one of those times. And now I'm taking white, green, ochre, and a little yellow. And just make a real thin mix on that. Don't over mix it, just leave it kind of marbly. Let's go into some of that dark. We're going to start the foliage now. And I'm going to do a little bit of a close-up for you.
I've tried several, not only different paints, but different techniques using that round, half round brush. Uh, I couldn't get it to work, so. So what I'm using is just my filbert, and I'll tell you, I really love the way a filbert makes trees. Doesn't ma matter whether they're evergreen trees or deciduous trees. I just think they make really nice trees. And just coming down even right over that tree won't make any difference. And you want to tilt your brush a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right sometimes to give, give the uh, tree some shape. Just keep on working with that foliage. Notice that I'm squashing the brush when I, I don't know, maybe it's too dark, you can't really see it that well. But with the filbert brush, when I put it into the pile of paints, I really smash it down and twist it. And what that does is it spreads out the bristles really nice and it gives it a, a wider form, more like a clump of shrub. Now as I get further down into this painting, what I want to do is just kind of cover the whole bottom. It doesn't have to be bushy looking. I just want the dark color down there. And let's go up to this top right corner. I want a little bit of coverage up here in the top. Not too much, just some suggestion that there is something there. And just fill in this right side very dark. I'll probably be going back and forth with dark and light quite a bit on this painting. So over here on the left side, doing the same thing, just making little clumps of bushes. And you see what I was talking about on the uh, in the background, the black, just so how, but how the white, titanium white paint just kind of covers it over, so it looks kind of misty and foggy. Then just fill in this foliage wherever you think it should be. Now I'm just taking a little bit of oil medium and I'm going into my lighter highlight color. Again tapping that brush, smashing it down. Lightly, lightly, just, just touching the tips of the branches. I really like the way the filbert works. I hope you don't mind being my being quiet in this video. It just is kind of nice for a change just to watch, let you watch me paint without me blabbering. <laughs> okay, I'm just continuing on on the right side. 
changing these colors just a little bit. Sometimes I'm using yellow ochre, sometimes cad yellow, even sometimes a little white. Not showing a lot of variation of color, which I'm surprised. Usually the color is uh, pretty evident when I tap into different colors, but this time it's not doing that. And we just keep coming down towards the foreground. And with more ochre, just filling in the bottom some. Now up to this upper tree, let's go ahead and just put a few little things in there. And just keep coming down into the foreground. Now down here I want to make more like bushes than trees. Now with my liner brush again and just a little bit of oil I want to define these branches on the trees just a little bit more. They kind of got faded away with all the tapping, so let's just put them back in. It's fun to experiment with different paintings. If you see a painting that you like, um, there's just so many things you could do to change it. You could change the colors of the background, you could change the placement of the trees that has waterfalls or water in it. You could change that from one side to another. Um, it's also fun to take a lot of pictures, you know, just a whole bunch of pictures and just pick out the different parts of a picture that you like and incorporate that into your painting. That's a really fun thing to do. You can just kind of make a collage and uh, works out great. And that you can be very creative and original that way too. Okay, let's go on to something new. I'm going to take this pile away here. We're just going to put it in the upper corner because I think we'll probably use that some more. So let's go into some dark brown, black, and a little burnt sienna. Just make a very dark color. Now with my filbert brush again, just loading both sides pretty heavy, I want to start going over this tree. Now this needs to be pretty dark. It's still a brown color, but it needs to be very, very dark. And this actually does take quite a bit of paint. You just fill in where you put branches. And just keep coming down. See there I made another boo-boo, but we'll fix that later. Probably with, um, with foliage. A little bit of green leaves or something.
We had a bunch of rain the other day. And I mean a bunch of rain, just out of the clear blue, just came out of nowhere. And um, boy, I'll tell you what, that sure did help our fires. We've had be such bad fires this year. It's been so hot and so dry. So that was just an absolute blessing that we got the rain. Really, really helped. So I'm just adding a few more branches here. I don't know if you guys are watching Cobra Kai or not. It's a series on, uh, it's either Netflix or Hulu. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, that is just the best series. They just came out, I think it was series five, about karate. It is a continuation of the Karate Kid. So Sis and I have been involved in watching that. Oh, we've been having the best time. It's such a great, great series. Anyway, let's start the path. I've just taken dark brown, oh well, first some white, then dark brown, and then sienna. And I put them, uh, made a little roll on the knife, and now I'm just adding my pathway to that. Just pushing that paint in, pushing left and right. And it takes a pretty good load of paint for this because it's a lot of coverage. And come all the way to the foreground. And as you are getting to the foreground, make sure you're widening this path because that's what's going to draw you into the center of the painting. Now I'm just using the little edge of the knife way back here because this is way way tiny back there. And now just a little bit of highlight. And with my fan brush, I just want to kind of blend those edges into the foliage. Pulling a little bit of green into the brown and pulling a little bit of brown into the green. See how that widens the path out? And now with some white and a little bit of that highlight green color that I made, Let's just tap in some little grasses and maybe some bushes and whatever kind of things you think you want in here. <laughs> and just, yeah, bring this right into the pathway here. I want to make just a little bit bigger bushes right here in a couple of places. Uh, I want to do this uh, tree trunk here. I want these, the foot of the tree to come out a little bit further into the pathway. So just using dark brown. Anyway, now add some grass into these little feet of the tree. Great. A little bit of foliage up here on the top yet. We just want some of that to be covered. 
also probably covers some of that mistake. <laughs> There's always a way. Bring a little bit of that out into the center. And I want to add some dark here because it's getting too light. And I forgot this little tree back here. Let's just go ahead and add that in. Okay, with my liner brush again, and again I have quite a bit of linseed oil in it. Let's make my favorite thing, my little birds, a little bit of life in this painting. And we also need to do like a few branches in the tree limbs. I think I'm going to have to find a, still a different angle for my camera because it's still not showing up the way I really want it to. Like my hand gets in the way and I don't like that. So when you're making these tree branches, make sure you make them thick enough to blend into the tree so they don't look like they're too spindly. And I'm still using that twirly method on these branches. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do something different on the next painting with uh, the branches part. <laughs> if I do trees again, who knows what I'll do. I was thinking about maybe doing a, a seascape with the... Uh, oh, everybody likes the ocean crest, you know, the big wave. I thought maybe I could do that. I'm not sure. You see the little twirl I'm using? Maybe if I held my brush further back it might help. That's, that's one thing. I have a tendency to hold my brush too close. Now you've probably been told that many times. Hold your brush way back. And it really does help to loosen your strokes. But you see, I wanted these tree branches to kind of bend downward so that it's leading you back into the pathway. Uh, that was my reason for hanging, having that overhang branch. Actually, it's coming out fairly well. <laughs> okay, now with the knife, I made some marble mix out of just white, dark brown, and black. Oh, and some sienna. And this, using the knife on trees to make it look like bark, is just like making snow on the mountain. When you bring your knife down the tree, it is your touch is so light that it's just barely anything. 
you're just brushing brushing by It took me a long time to learn this knack. I'll tell you, that was one of the hardest things to do. That, making snow break and making the evergreen trees. I really struggled with that because I'm left-handed and I had right-handed teachers and wow, that made it super difficult. <laughs> Anyway, you just make your highlight where this light would be shining on the tree here. Wherever you think the light would hit on a branch, that's where you put in some, some highlight. Now, a touch of blue and some white. On the left side of the tree, there would be some highlight shadow, some reflective shadow over here. So a little blue skimming down the left side of the tree. Be sure and make it very bark looking if you can. I've seen some people do this with a brush too. I have never mastered that technique, but it would be nice to be able to do it with a brush. Although I've become accustomed to using the knife now, and I love the knife, so. Okay, now where I've got too much blue, or at least where I think there's too much blue, I'm just using some dark and going over the top. Now, smashing this brush again with some, some uh, highlight color and yellow. I just want to highlight just the very tips of these grasses and foliage. And if you want, you can always wait and do this part later because once it's dry, it's easy to put a little highlight on and that way if you don't like it you can just take it off. So now using that same brush I just wiped it off but now I'm adding some flowers, a pretty red flowers. Just dipping the tips of the bristles into the red paint and now a little yellow And I also want to add a touch of red into the trees, kind of like um, like there would be a little bit of maybe fall just starting, a, just a brown. The red mixes with the green and it turns kind of a brownish color. So it would be like fall maybe starting. Anyway, with this dark color, I want to go ahead and darken some of this area in the corners and in the sides. And now with some dark brown, I want to just go over the pathway and just deepen some of the color here. Make it stand out a little bit more than what it does now. Yeah, that's nice. That, that makes the pathway really come forward. I'm wiping that knife off. Just the tiniest bit of white, light color, and it can be any light color. Sometimes when I pause the camera 
and I go away for a minute and that's what happens. The cloud comes over or the bright sun comes in the window or whatever. Anyway, when I came back, I looked at this tree and I thought, oh, I can't handle that. <laughs> that is an ugly tree, doesn't look right, doesn't belong here. So I'm just covering it. And now I just want to highlight just a slight bit put some of this lighter color back in the in the corner. I go back and forth with the dark until you actually stand away till you get several feet away from it, you know, just set your pic set your picture on a stand or something and walk away, come back and look at it and you'll see where it needs changing. Another thing you can do that's really handy is just take it and stand way back and set it in front of a mirror. Just hold it and look in the mirror and that reverses the painting and so you can see a lot of stuff that way too that really um, things that you can repair and fix. So now I just want to darken this a little bit on the bottom here, the grasses. Make those stand out a little bit more. and bring it out into the pathway. And now back to my liner brush, some dark brown, both my dark browns, or both my browns I should say. Now I am by no means an animal painter of any kind, so this is not a, a real good replica of a, a squirrel, but it's, it'll, it's okay, it'll work. He's got his little paws here and a little nut in his hand. And he's got to have that cute little tail just kind of fluff that out a little bit. Yeah, he, he turned out okay. Not spectacular, but he turned out okay. And just kind of darken the center a little bit. Now I want to go back and just go into the flowers just a slight bit again. Just using my filbert brush, tapping it out. I want to make this yellow come a little bit more to life. A few yellow flowers. Adding white. There, that made it show up good. And again, back into the to the foliage and, and just making a, like a little rust, not rust, <laughs> little uh, fall colors into the green. Here in Oregon, we are just starting to get the fall colors. Boy, they are really coming out all of a sudden. So now I want to take red because this would be our highlight side of the tree. And it just got red and white. Now this is a little bit too much red. I'm going to go over it with a little more white. And this is the finished painting. I made several changes after I finished this tutorial, which you can see in the photo. And here's some other suggestions for tutorials that you might like to watch. Okay, I'll, I'll see you next month. Bye.